and welcome back yet again. Now in this particular segment we're going to cover some of the things that you really want to make sure that you have set up in your Photoshop. Whether it be CS2, CS3, CS5, CS5.5, um, there may be some differences. If so, please leave your notes on the forum uh, so we know what these are. And I will update the original post and try to keep things as simple and easy to find as I possibly can. But I can only do that with your individual help. I'm going to go ahead and launch Photoshop. And a few things I want to explain real quick, and again I'm explaining these for the newest user, but even the most advanced user may learn something here, or may see where I and we as a whole need your help. So, one thing I do know, and I've got this question quite a few times, and I've had my own problems with this, is sometimes I'll go to select channels, and instead of choosing channels, I accidentally click just above it. And what that does is it makes me think that, or makes you think that, it disappeared. And where is it? Well, Adobe has these hot clickable spots. And if you click on them, it will do that. It'll get them out of your way, thinking you want them out of your way. So just click on it again. Uh, you may also go to click on, say, layers and accidentally close that. And if so, just go up into window. And there it is right there, layers. And it puts it back in its default location. Now, if you want to move these around, feel free to move these around. I never use color. I don't use it here. So I can get rid of that. I can also get rid of swatches. And a matter of fact, I don't use any of these things in 99% of what I do. So it's all gone. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go up here to... I'm going to just create a new image. And we'll leave the 800 by 800. It's fine. And... I created this new image, by the way, with, again, pressing Control N, and that will bring up that dialog. I have transparency background selected here, so that's why you're seeing it as it is. I prefer that. I have it being set at the defaults, um, which is 8-bit, and so on and so on and so on. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and with Control, or I'm sorry, Alt Backspace, I'm going to fill in that foreground color. And I'm going to use control and the minus key to zoom out. And you're going to see here that I actually did recently set my colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set these colors. And this is probably the most important thing you could know. People that have lines appearing on their libraries will not be able to detect them, at least easily, if you have the default. When you're viewing images, it's quite the distraction to have this light color here, it's, it's a terrible distraction, and you're not going to be seeing the image like you want. If you see on my forum, I have a video section, and the theme is dark. And that's kind of like when you're sitting watching a movie with your favorite girl or guy um, to have that dark atmosphere. Well, in viewing pictures, it's very important, and it will help things stand out to you and be more prominent. So I'm going to show you how to change this color. This is your workspace, and I want a dark workspace color like this. Your workspace color is probably going to be something more like that. But let's say I wanted to set it to that. By default, you're going to have the gradient tool in your toolbar. Use its flyout by clicking on it and hold. Go to Paint Bracket. Uh, yeah, Bracket. And go ahead and bring that paint bucket over to your workspace. And you want to shift click, so press shift and hold it and click your left mouse button, and there it is. So cycle through your different views, and we will be using these different views. If you press the letter F on your keyboard, it will set your view to the next one available. If I press it again right now, you're going to see that I'm in maximized mode, and I'm going to go ahead and press shift and fill it. And I'm going to press F again, and this is my particular favorite view, and thank you Adobe for creating this. Press Shift, click, and there it is again. And if I press F again, it's going to be automatically black for full screen view. So it doesn't, I can change it if I want. And now what I'm going to do is go back and I'm going to set it back to a dark color. And again, you want a dark color. I don't want black. 
So I'm going to do this color again, and I'm going to press F and do that again, and F, and there we go. This is going to help you notice them white lines. It's going to help you quite a lot, and it's going to make viewing your images so much better and so much easier on your eyes. And if you're on Photoshop for a long, for long stretches, you're going to really be grateful for having a dark background. Now, real quick, I want to talk about having or or the different views and the benefits of them. If I had, say, zoomed in here on a DDS file. I can't really see the edge because when I move over to the edge, I can't see um, anything. And if I try to make it wider, I'm still not seeing my workspace and I need to see my workspace. So press F. And now whenever you want to pan across your image, just go ahead and press the space bar and you'll see the hand. And now holding the space bar, I can move over. And right now, in this particular view, I still can't see my workspace really. So I'm going to use the next view, press an F. And here, I can drag and see my workspace. And this is the best thing Adobe ever did for older versions of Photoshop. So now, I can zoom in until my heart's content and still be able to pan over and see the side. And this is what you really want. And this is how you're going to spot them white lines. I've talked to about 100 people now. All right, that's like exaggerated by about 97. But they keep telling me that, no, I've checked and I don't see the white lines. Well, I have them send me their files and I check and there they are. And this is the only way I can see them. So please keep this one in mind. It's very important view when working with your DDS files. All right, so Another thing I want to do is now that I have all this set, I want to save my workspace. So get everything set the way you want. I'm going to go ahead and move that up like this. Leave the toolbar the way it is set up right now, and I'm going to go ahead into Window, Workspace, Save Workspace. And I'm going to call this Dance. I'm going to set keyboard shortcuts so it'll remember any custom keyboard shortcuts I may have done. And in this fresh install, I haven't done that yet. And my menus, the way I have my menus set up. Or menu choices for each tool. I'm going to choose Save. And there it is. Now if I were to come in here and say, oops, I did that, or oops, I did that, and I killed this, and I, uh, let's see, I had this set up like this, and I couldn't figure out how to press that again. Or whatever you do. I undocked. Um, something and I just made it a mess. I can go into window workspace and go down to dance and it's going to give me this stupid message saying you sure I'm going to check that so it doesn't ever ask me that again and say yes. And now I have it back exactly the way I wanted. I can create a new texture, new image and it saved all my options. So there you have it. Those are the most important things I can tell you before we dive into the actual paint kit. And this particular one step here uh, is going to save you a lot of time. All right, the rest of the things that we're going to be learning about Photoshop, we're going to be doing as we go and as we use those particular tools. I don't think you're really going to be able to retain the information that I have to give you until it's used an example, and it will help better me show you. So I will see you in the next tutorial.